Welcome to Goldsmith Lord and I'm from Decide on Animal Health and we'll talk a bit more about what my company does and why we do things the way we do. And joining us is the amazing Nikita Stowers from Varney. Nikita, can you just give us a quick background as to, well, I don't know how you do it quick because you've got so much experience, but yeah, tell us a bit about what you bring to the table yeah, tonight. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us at eight o'clock um, at night on a Thursday. Um, we're so happy to have you here tonight to talk about winter feeding and, and all things about um, fibre and, and all the goodies that we can give our horses during winter. Uh, so for those of you who I haven't uh, met or spoken to before, I'm Nikita Stowers and um, I set up a wee consultancy called VANI, which stands for Veterinary and Nutritional Integration, which is quite a mouthful, so that's why we shorten it. Um, we set that up in 2016, and our goal was really to help horse owners like yourselves um, kind of decipher what's out there. Um, there's so much out there on the market, and, and more and more um, we see new products every week. Um, so we really wanted to have a space that horse owners um, could come to us, for example, and um, get some independent advice around around products and around feeding and and knowing that what they're doing is is the right thing for their horse and situation. So uh, I set that up with a colleague of mine who's a veterinarian in Auckland in 2016, and. And we do everything from consulting direct to horse owners through to helping companies like Poseidon with um, with technical queries, um, with things like formulation um, and all kind of facets of, of equine nutrition. So, so that's a, a brief bit about me, I guess. Um, I've worked previously as, as a nutritionist for companies in New Zealand and consulted in New Zealand and overseas. Um, so yeah, feel free to pop in your questions about anything horse nutrition related as we go through. Thank you, Nikita. And we've been working together, I think about four years, would that be right? I, I feel like it was pre, was it, was it in the middle of COVID or pre-COVID? I'm, I'm Pre, pre, because we, yeah. um, I remember coming to Equitana at um, Auckland and that was pre-COVID and we met, we were working with you then. And I don't know, time flies. I think the, the COVID bubbles just changed all our time frames. But it's so great. I always, every time we work together, I learn something new and I'm looking forward to tonight as well. And, we, you know, we've really focused on winter feeding and how you can feed without breaking the bank. But to be honest, I think we should be able to feed our horses effectively without breaking the bank all the time, whether it's winter or not. And what I'm noticing at Poseidon, people becoming very money conscious, which is a good thing because they're starting to make choices around how do we feed more simply. And honestly, we all need to do that. So even though we're focusing on winter and budgets, the takeaway message tonight is that we have overcomplicated the way we feed our horses. So I'm hoping at the end of this webinar, you're going to have some more confidence around feeding more simply. Nikita, you'll just keep an eye on the Q&A in the chat box, in the Q&A box. Yeah, of course, sorry. I, I said I would and now I'm not looking at it, but yeah, I'll just have to jump in there now. <laughs> Perfect. So what are we going to cover tonight? Really looking at why is gut health so important at any time and what do we mean by gut health, but particularly in winter time. And I'm always amazed at how clever our horses are, that Mother Nature has given them this, this gut that does so many things. And we'll talk a little bit about how they have their own really internal heater. We'll then spend some time, and we're just touching on it, but looking at stress. And it's something that we at Poseidon are learning more and more about as horse owners. We truly underestimate the impact of stress on our horses and particularly our horse's gut. And we'll talk to you about a term called leaky gut, which I'm sure many of you have heard. But what does it mean and why is that significant? Obviously, winter is also a stressful time, change in temperatures. So we'll touch on that. And then at the end, and this is not going to be a webinar that focuses completely on our products because as a company, we're all about education. But I do want to explain at the end about what are our range of products, particularly a brand new one that we've just launched called Equibon, which is getting the most amazing reviews. And then at the very end, we're going to do a product giveaway. So Nikita, do you want to talk about this? 
Yeah, I've just finished doing a few quick types to the chat saying that I'll, I'll answer those questions because they're all great, great questions that I'm sure um, other people want to hear the answer to. Um, so yes, we have an amazing giveaway for everyone attending um, tonight that will go into the draw for this. So we've got pretty much my favorite combo in terms of gut health feeding. We've got three bags of Fiber Protect, which um, I'm sure most people that are here tonight um, know about the product. So this is a product from Fiber Fresh, which is um, their flagship um, original product, I guess, um, that's been around for yonks and yonks. But um, but it's basically just pure lucerne. But the way that it's um, manufactured and preserved means that it holds a lot more of the nutrients. And then if, for example, you, you dried that lucerne and, and made lucerne hay or lucerne chaff, um, it also makes it much more digestible for the horse. Um, and because it's a moist product, uh, we find it really good to use in times when we need um, additional water or if horses are, are gone off their water, which we will touch on as well a bit later, eh? with regards to like stress pace and things when they need um, they need a bit um, more hydration. So you go into the draw to win three bags of that. And then also, am I right, Linda, in saying that it's a bucket of digestive RP and a bucket of Equibind? Yeah, yeah, so um, the, so, so the digestive RP um is I guess the the brand new um one of the brand new products from Poseidon, which is pretty much like digestive EQ, which a lot of you will know um on steroids. I guess it's um <laughs> it's it's really useful for for horses that are fed a lot of grain. Um, or for performance or race horses that are under more stress. So Linda's going to touch a bit more on the specifics on that product later, but amazing product. Um, we've we've still got a lot of grain feeding in New Zealand, so so really has a good place for us. And then Equibind, which is also brand spanking new, um, which is contains um, Allotox, which is a, a registered toxin binder, and it has actually a number of actions. So the thing I like about um, having Allotox in there is that it's it's going to bind a number of different toxins, and it does this in different ways. So we, we know that well, we actually, we know that we know very little about pasture-based toxins. So um, this is actually the only one on the market that I'm aware of, um, Allotox, that actually has research behind it with regards to binding pasture-based tox toxins, um, which seem to be a real issue. And I've seen um, quite a bit of that this kind of autumn period too. We tend to see more toxin issues. So sorry, I've probably gone too far, but amazing products in that giveaway bundle so I think to stay in the draw to get in the draw you've got to stay till the end is that right Linda we've got to yep. keep, keep you on the hook um, and, keep we'll with us. That. and I think I think the winner will be notified by email so yeah. absolutely thank you for that yeah we're pretty excited about it I think it's a perfect perfect bundle okay so today we'll, we'll do all that and why is that all that important for me it's it's you know, we take what we do very seriously and ideally at the end of this webinar, you can just get reassured that Poseidon Animal Health is not a company that just wants to shove supplements to you. It's much more than that. We go, you know, above and beyond at every level from product formulation and manufacturing, gut health becoming a very topical um, area. And you'll see there's lots of products coming to market, but they don't always have the science behind them. And or they might be very incomplete. The gut is a big organ, which Nikita will take us through in a moment. We need a really comprehensive approach. So not only are our supplements next level and incredibly high quality, but we are so committed to education because at the end of the day, it doesn't, it's not just about supplements, it's about feeding correctly, which we'll talk about, really good management and then evidence-based supplements. So there's that really nice combination and also customer service. We take that seriously as well. So as we grow, we're making sure we have the resources to manage the questions that are coming through. And we're really excited that we've recently put on a full-time person in New Zealand who's also working with that other New Zealand team. So ideally, greater trust and confidence in Poseidon, but more importantly, increase confidence for yourself making choices. And I've had horses all my life, and I know that I have made mistakes in the past 
always overthinking, always, you know, second guessing. There's always someone wants to give you some advice. And unfortunately, I didn't probably listen to people who were qualified to give me that advice. So now I know that at the end of this se seminar, Nikita will be sharing some really simple tips so you can go away and make some really educated, informed choices, and then you can stick with the formula for feeding for good gut health. You know, it's it's very similar about fibre and vitamins and minerals. You can tweak that, but the foundation's always the same. So ideally, lots of confidence moving forward. Just a little bit about Poseidon. We actually do manufacture in Napier and we've got a great team. Our team is obviously Nikita's one of our consultants and we love working with her. We have incredible who we are. I'm, I'm, I'm sure who is in on the chat tonight and joining us. She is such a whiz around marketing and she helps share our message in a way that's easy to understand and she's also using our products has seen the transformation so she's very passionate about it and she also loves horses she's got an incredible um social media site called new zealand mayor hope i can share that who we are because her videos and photos are amazing and then tony moore who some of you may recognize he was working for pride and he's now come across then he's um unfortunately tony was going to join us tonight but he actually came down really unwell today so he hasn't been able to join the webinar but he knows a lot about horse feeding. So we have a great team and we are, you know, the reason I know about the devastation that you had around Napier is because our where we manufacture was completely destroyed. It was a really stressful time and I can't even imagine what everyone went through. So one of the reasons why we did this webinar, wasn't it, Nikita, was to try and come back and say, you guys have been through so much. How do we give you advice that's relevant? And, and I know not everybody went through that, but it has a huge impact on the whole horse community. So we spoke earlier before we started that if you were in that situation and you've got some questions and you may not want to ask them publicly tonight, you can certainly email us once you've met with us and know that you can trust us. If you've got some questions, if you've got some ongoing health issues as a result of what's been happening, you know, we are here to help. Okay, so I am now handing it over to Nikita. Cool. So I've, I see there's a few questions and okay. that have popped up already in the Q&A. Um, what I'm going to do is um, try and keep an eye on that, but I will try and get through this stuff as well. So if there's anything that's missed or I don't cover it um, specifically, then um, we can certainly kind of email those responses through and stuff, eh? Linda, um, because sometimes I could spend all night talking to someone about a situation, um, yeah. but I will definitely try and cover some of the broad stuff and then pick up on the questions as they're relevant to, to where we're talking. So um, by all means, put your questions in and um, I will do my best to get to all of them. So we'll just briefly um, cover off firstly why gut health is so important for the horse and I guess why the horse is quite unique in terms of its digestive tract and um, how it digests feed so so you and I um, if we if we went out into a paddock and tried to eat grass we pretty much couldn't digest most of it <laughs> and um, and the horse is pretty amazing because um, it can, and and the way it does that is it basically houses trillions of bacteria, protozoa, fungi, and its hind gut um, to do so. So I just thought I would start off there. Usually I start off at the start of the digestive tract, but I think just to emphasize how how amazing um, the horse's digestive system is and how it's able to turn this basically indigestible fiber into a food source and an energy source is pretty incredible. Um, so don't, don't go out and try and think that you can um, go and just live on a grass-based diet because you and I wouldn't and, and we'd lose weight very quickly. But um, so the horse, the horse has basically two parts to its digestive tract. Um, and we'll we'll touch as well on on why that's significant and from a product perspective as well um, what products work where but essentially you're looking at um, the foregut initially which consists of the stomach and small intestine uh, and that's where we get digestion of most of our like grain-based feeds our fats and oils um, our proteins a lot of them are digested here and broken down here and 
And compared to the to the huge hind gut, this is a reasonably, I guess, small part of the digestive system for the horse, and especially um, the stomach itself. You know, we, we're talking kind of, we're Australian and New Zealand, so we're talking like rugby ball size um, for the stomach of the horse. And when, I think it's actually the smallest um, stomach in relation to body size of any animal, which is is pretty amazing. So, but Kate, with, just on that, I just yeah. think it's, that's such an important point. And I know that prior to, to me learning about complete gut health, I put down every problem to gastric ulcers. And I'm not saying they're not significant, but when you look at how big the gut is and how much room it takes up, it, you can see how important it is to understand how significant it is. And I always like looking at where the point of the large colon is. You know, it's around the girth area, whereas before, if a horse was girthy or grumpy, it's a gastric ulcer. So I think that, it, you know, this is a way of challenging that and saying that the gut requires support at every level, not just the stomach. Yeah, absolutely, Linda. And I think the thing with the stomach and with gastric ulcers um, are that they're easy to see. You know, we can we can easily see them on a scope, so they're easy to diagnose and easy to treat. The hindgut, not so much, because it's not like we can put a camera down there and look and see what's going on. So um, we really have to kind of use symptoms to tell us what might be going wrong with the, the horse's hindgut. Um, but what we often see as well is that when we see problems in the stomach, Stomach, we usually have problems in the hind gut as well. They often go hand in hand. Um, but the things that we need to put in the diet to keep them healthy, some of them are the same, but some are slightly different. And so, for example, like digestive enzymes that are in um, the in the digestive EQ and RP, um, they'll work in the full gut. But the um, you know some of the other products and, and pre and postbiotics, they're more meant for the hind gut. So um, you've got to be really careful. I'm, I'm kind of digressing a little bit here, but um, you do need to be careful when you're looking at gut health supplements too, that you want to make sure that you get something that's as complete as possible because some things will just work on the stomach and the um, foregut. Some things are just meant for the hindgut. Um, so you you kind of want to make sure that you're tackling it from all angles because we do often see problems that um, occur in the stomach and then are also occurring um, further along the digestive tract. So, so yeah, so basically if we think of that foregut as digesting our grains and our and most of our kind of hard feeds, if they are grain-based, um, then we look at further on to the hindgut and that's what deals with all of our fibre. And so um, the horse has this... Um, amazing really well developed cecum and it houses these trillions of um, bacteria and acts um, basically they get to live there in exchange for providing the horse with energy from the fiber that it eats so if the horse just had its um, foregut it would basically chew all that grass and most of it would end up undigested and what that means is that the horse couldn't get energy from that food but because of all the bacteria living in that hindgut, um, the horse is able to get most of its energy from fiber, which, which is amazing. So um, we're going to touch on tonight as well um, how much fiber the horse needs um, because it's truly a, a huge amount. Um, and when we look at just the size on that picture of the, the horse's hindgut, we can see why. So probably talk way fun. too much on one slide and we've got about 35 <laughs> to get through. So we better... Okay, Throw one little thing in there as well that I, it was one of those wow facts that when I, you know, fairly on that I learned about gut health, that you know, the cecum, the first part of the hind gut, and as you said, it's this big fermentation chamber. It sits on the right-hand side. It's about 1.2 metres. And so we know that the good bacteria, I say they create magic, you know, the behaviour, the appetite, the energy, and then the so-called bad bacteria create lactic acid. So you can imagine you can have all these great bacteria creating what you want or you get the bad ones creating lactic acid, which can lead to inflammation. And one of the things that we know is that often, and it's not just this, but often some of those right-hand transitions or you put your leg on the horse, you put it back the ears go back it's because it's inflamed and the horse that started this whole journey for me was the most he is still the most beautiful off the track and even though he was with a you know a top dressage training he just would often get the right cantilever. I didn't understand why 
now I do. When it's painful, it's inflamed, it makes it hard. And I just think it's a, a great thing to share. So if you're listening and thinking, does my horse have difficulty going to the right? That can be a sign. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. So if we look at everything that gut health has an effect on, we might just think, oh, we've got to keep the gut healthy so that we can digest food. But we know more and more and we're learning all the time that it's much more than that. So it's got a huge role with regards to immunity and the immune system, um, even in so far as its brain function and how that works. Is it, there's a really close relationship between the gut and the brain. Um, inflammation and disease, obviously, they're going to have, you know, a, a healthy gut is going to have a huge impact on that. Um, performance, and I think that should say recovery, but recover, but yeah. Um, so yeah, performance and recovery, obviously, again, if if we, this is why changes in diet are so have such a big impact too. And what we see a lot is horses that are traveling to events and things, often they fall flat. And sometimes that's just a, a factor of like the, the stress on the gut and also that we may have made some changes to the to the horse's um, diet, even if we didn't mean to when they're traveling or at events. And we often see that, you know, by, Sometimes on the first day they're okay and like if it's a long event on the second day they, they're pretty flat or sometimes they you know might stop jumping and things like that. So we we need to think about the gut and what's going on there. Um, cool. So where are we? So if we look at these kind of three major gut functions in a bit more detail, we've obviously, first of all, we're looking at digesting and utilizing the food. And this is primarily fiber for the horse. So um, oh, my, my Q&A and things is kind of half over my slide here. So I shall just shift it. Um, but you've got a couple of um, nice graphics here. Um, and this is where, um, Linda, you can probably elaborate on this too, because I know you guys have been looking at this in quite a lot of depth, but it's quite a new area, especially with regards to equine nutrition, even for human nutrition, it's quite new. Um, but what we're seeing um, is a lot of the symptoms that we're seeing on the outside of horses now, we are thinking, okay, this is probably going to be related in some way to leaky gut. Um, and and I, there's a lot of different analogies. I know Nerida uses um, one. Um, one that I heard recently was around uh, um, uh, thinking about a fishnet. And, um, you know, you catch a fish and it drains all the things out. But if you've all of a sudden got a hole in that fishnet, you might lose things out that fishnet that you don't want to, like the fish will go out, for example. And so that kind of is like the, you know, it might happen to the horse where toxins and, and digestive material goes into the bloodstream and we don't want that happening. Um, so we get this leaky gut situation and we can get a whole lot of bad things happening as a result. Um, I like the analogy. I haven't heard that one before. That's um, you know, I heard it. I think it was a, um, a human leaky gut person talking yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, another one we often talk about is is like having your shoelaces really tight. You want those tight junctions. You want the shoelaces really tight. And so when we get leaky gut and it opens up and it will only happen when there's stress of some kind happening, it's significant because now what happens is the gut opens up and toxins, as you said, pathogens are getting through and the body has no choice but to fight that inflammation. But what's really interesting, particularly if anybody listening has performance horses, that now the, the horse takes really valuable energy and uses that to close the gut up. And that's energy that you would have used for thriving and performance and recovery. So leaky gut is a real phenomena and it's really interesting. And we're learning more about how stress has impact on leaky gut. And the interesting thing is, and we'll talk about this later, is that horses being flight animals don't want to always tell you they're stressed, but just know that this is happening and it's almost like white ants just eating away and sometimes you don't know until it's catastrophic. So it's a new concept. It's very true of humans. And, you know, I didn't mention at the beginning, my passion and gut health came about because I had a catastrophic health event. And looking back, clearly I had leaky gut, which led to something quite catastrophic and I got leaky brain, which is 
very interesting. Um, so it's a real, it's, it's something we're learning more about. And tonight, every time we talk about fibre, you just go, there's so many reasons why we need to be feeding it because it, it pulls the shoelaces tight and it stops the hole in the fishnet. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love those. Um, and the other thing, just quickly, you mentioned horse, the horse being a flight animal, um, and and that's really true. And we often see, you know, say, oh, no, our horse, you know, wouldn't have ulcers or wouldn't have this or, you know, they seem fine. Um, but we know, you know, from doing this out in the field, um, we've scoped horses that will have grade three, four ulceration, really severe and um, they're not showing anything on the outside. And if we look from an evolution perspective, that's smart because they don't want to show the lions that they're not well, right? Because who's the lion going to go after? The sick horse. So that's why horses are so stoic and so tough and, and they put up with so much until they just can't anymore. So um, yeah, we, we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can from a gut health perspective to help them, even if we think that they don't need helping, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think the take home message is the gut does so much more than just digest food. And in fact, it's the foundation for everything. And I, I love analogies. And I, another one I've been, you know, the gut's the engine of the horse. You don't want a hole in the petrol tank. You don't want fuel leaking out. You don't want to create, you know, the engine having oil leaks. We need to let the engine do what it's got to do. And then it creates this magic because the horses are so capable of creating their own energy, their own B vitamins. There are things we need to supplement with, but the gut is where you start. Cool. So just some um, fundamentals for, for really keeping, keeping your horse's um, gut in, in great shape and keeping it nice and healthy. Um, and this goes for winter, but it also goes for, for all of our seasons. And I'm just going to try and move that. There we go. Um, so the foundation of any diet, and you'll you'll hear myself and every nutritionist um, harp on about this, but we, we have to feed good quality fiber. We need to feed heaps of it. And we want to feed a variety of fiber as well. So that's because um, each different, you know, fiber source that we feed is going to kind of create and feed different bacteria in the gut. And if we've got a nice diverse population of bacteria in the gut, then they're actually able to cope a lot better with change, um, with stress. Um, so, so really, yeah, look at look at the quality of fiber that you're feeding and make sure that your horse is getting enough. Um, when we come into winter, we come into this um, tricky situation where often we've got a lot of, um, we get a lot of rain in New Zealand um, in most parts, um, and we can get a lot of uh, a high water content in our pasture in this time. We get this happening in spring as well. Um, in spring, we typically get higher water and higher sugar. But in winter, um, with daylight hours decreasing, we don't get as high as sugars, but we still get really high water levels, which means that the kind of effective fiber or the dry matter in, in our pastures effectively drops. Um, and if you want to know how much grass a horse might need to eat during the winter, um, to meet their fiber requirement just to keep their gut healthy and their bacteria populations thriving so that they can get enough energy to, to kind of live. We're looking in the realm of, you know, for a smaller horse, somewhere between 40 and 100 kilos of grass. So if you, and and I mean that on what I call an as-fed basis. So if you just went out and picked it, that's how much grass you may need to feed your, your horse. And that's because of these really dry, low dry matter um, percentages that we can get. So we often talk about one and a half to two percent um, of, of body weight being a fiber requirement for a horse. So I always use the typical 500, um, 2%, that's 10 kilos, right? But if you um, 
if you then take 10 and divide that by its dry matter percentage, which may only be 15% um, in, in winter or spring, then all of a sudden you're looking at, I think, almost 70 kilos that that horse needs. So, so be very careful um, when you're feeding that you're making sure that you meet that requirement. And if pasture's not limited, then you usually will be able to meet that requirement. But there are times that, that you can't, and often when the dry matter is very low, the horse just actually can't physically eat enough um, to, to meet its requirements. So then we want to use things like hay and alternative forages that have higher dry matter percentages in this time so that we make sure that the horse is getting enough fibre. Keto when horses are stable too, I know some people stable their horses in winter, to take that into consideration as well. If you're restricting the grazing time, then yeah. just don't put them away with one biscuit of hay. And I know so many people that used to do that. So not, you know, to mention you're not going to meet their digestible energy requirements, but also they're going to have a long period of time without anything in their gut to buffer against all the stomachs, um, stomach acids. So, you know, this constant access to fibre is so important for so many reasons. Yeah, that's right. And even, you know, like if that horse had, you know, you use that example and we see it a lot of just getting one slab of hay overnight. And if they've, you know, completely eaten it in the morning, the chances are they probably needed, you know, at least three. Um, then you're looking at, you've only given them, say, two kilos approximately of fibre um, over that whole night period. So if that was 12 hours, then you've given them two kilos and then they need to, you know, get another eight kilos if, if they're turned out. And on winter pasture and pasture that has a low dry matter contact, that's um, content that's quite hard to do. So that's a really good point, Linda. Um, the other, the other um, point that is quite um, useful is that most horses, if they're in kind of what we call light to moderate work, and that actually encompasses most of our um, kind of lower level performance horses, even our, you know, dressage horses, things that don't have a, a really high calorie requirement, um, we often actually don't have a requirement for hard feed per se and this is um I say this with you know there's a few conditions around that because if we've got a horse that needs to gain weight and things like that then obviously we usually need to put additional feeds in but often we we probably just need fiber and make sure that they're getting enough fiber um, but we do lack a lot of the vitamins and minerals that we need and I'm going to touch on that in a bit more detail shortly or we can jump to the next one yep um, so amino acids are, are a really um, interesting one as well because most of you would be familiar and you're all feeding amino acids as part of proteins, but there's some specific amino acids um, that are really important, for example, for gut health. Um, so we have certain amino acids um, when we look back at that leaky gut, healthy gut um, scenario again that actually can help improve those tight junctions um, they can help um, other amino acids can help kind of adding a protective layer um, we have specific amino acids that can do that in the stomach and then also in the hindgut as well and they can help um, threonine for example can really help um, keep a nice healthy uh, mucus layer which which is a protective basically layer that protects the gut and the lining of the gut um, and these these amino acids are there's a there's a term for amino acids that have to be supplied in the diet so when we talk about essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids the difference between those are essential ones have to be provided in the diet so the horse you've got to give those um, the horse can't make them um, the horse has a, a great um, quality of being able to make a lot of amino acids and make a lot of um, other nutrients but um some have to be provided in the diet just on that Nikita one of the things that people say about our products is they often say they're more expensive than other ones and there's a reason for that because we have got really high levels of aminos in our products and aminos are actually really expensive so you know we've got really market leading amino acids and they're in all our products because we just feel like you can't get enough gut health 
Yeah, absolutely. And and just to add to that as well, you kind of do pay for what you get, um, especially with nutritional supplements. So so when you sometimes see kind of cheaper or knockoff versions of things, what, what that means is, is they've sacrificed some nutrients usually along the way because, yeah, amino acids are really expensive. Um, you know, a lot of the um, like enzymes and things like that, they're expensive ingredients to use. But the, the reason that they're put in products is because we know they work and we know they've got a, you know, science behind them and um, they're actually there to do, to do something. Um, so this, this little graphic here shows a kind of a typical situation. And this is actually um, from a client of mine from their pasture, um, a, a winter sample. And it just kind of shows us that if we feed our horse just based on, on pasture, um, where, where the gaps would be. So usually in New Zealand, most of our energy and protein uh, requirements are met if we just fed a horse on pasture. Um, even things like calcium, phosphorus, some of our bigger minerals are often met, although we do need to make sure that these are balanced because often, often they're not. And we do see situations where, for example, we get what we call an inverted phosphorus to calcium ratio, and, and that's not good, especially for growing horses. So we need to make sure we put more calcium in. But what we most often see is we see uh, deficiencies in copper, zinc, uh, selenium, iodine and then and then quite often as well with sodium so um, that can be easily fixed with salt um, but you can see here that this is what I touched on earlier is that often we don't actually need a hard feed per se for a lot of horses but we just need to kind of fill those gaps with with the vitamins and minerals that are missing in their diet so in winter, we often we usually get slightly lower calories in our pasture, which means um, less energy, um, less calories for for weight gain, and that's why we might usually see. You know, I I have an older horse, and I see it with him coming into winter. That's when I do need to put some more calories into his diet because he will drop off a little bit. Um, so we see less calories in the pasture. We also often see lower protein, although our protein is not usually limited in New Zealand pastures. Um, but coinciding with this, often our horse's workload might decrease. You know, it's not always fun riding in the in the mud in winter. So often horses get turned out or they're ridden less. So it kind of goes hand in hand with that lower calories often. But there are situations like older horses and things, especially as they become a little bit less efficient at digesting the feeds that we're giving them, that we will need to top them up. Um, just one, oh, sorry, Nikita, you go. No, no, carry on, you go. I was just going to say that this is one of the reasons why we created our Digestive VM because, and it's interesting that, you know, I think, Nikita, you helped me run. We ran it through so many programs and not all the vitamins and mineral supplements on the market will actually meet all the requirements. So if you are using a vitamin and mineral supplement, unfortunately, you can't assume that it will be doing enough. And there are some really great, you know, use someone like Nikita, there are programs like Feed Excel. We've got a free program called Feed Assist where you can actually run it through. But what I love is that every single time we put VM through, except for salt, it will balance. It's a really easy way to add a, you know, a pellet that's got no starch, it's good quality, it's got more gut support onto a fiber-based diet and tick, it all turns green. It actually makes my job so much easier because <laughs> Now, instead of like, you know, it's a bit of trial and error often with a diet and you're, you're plugging in this and, oh, no, that doesn't work. And does this one work? No, it's giving too much of that. And honestly, um, no word of a lie, you put in VM and everything goes green and you're happy days. The one thing I will say as well is um, you can see on this graph, selenium is quite low. Uh, but what we do see in the field is we actually see quite a lot of toxic seleniums. Um, so I can't recommend enough, A, to get your pasture tested, um, just to see what your pasture looks like or what your main forage looks like, and then balance your own diet accordingly. Uh, but also get your horse's blood selenium tested um, because more often than not, I actually see high blood seleniums now. And that's probably just because of over supplementation. Um, but I also see it 
For example, if we're providing, um, you know, 100% selenium on this graph, often I'll see a high blood selenium still. And, and what I think is that some of these kind of organic seleniums and things, and this is just my thoughts, um, that we're feeding are possibly better digested than we thought and the horse takes more from them. Um, so we don't we don't necessarily need to go right to 100% on things like selenium. Often, actually, I'll go a little bit lower and then I'll just blood test that horse and make sure that they're in the right space um, because selenium is toxic. So we do need to make sure we don't overdo things like. Yep. Now, Kira, do you know it's nearly quarter to seven? We're just having such a lovely chat here. Oh, no. <laughs> so okay, quarter okay. to nine. Quarter to nine. It's too early. Okay, we'll carry on. We'll carry okay, on. Let's keep moving. <laughs> Okay, so so this pasture quality drop that we get in winter means that we might need to feed additional calories. And how I usually do that is I look to fibers first and then I will go to fats and oils. That's a really nice way to complement a high fiber diet without pumping in grain. And then if we need to, then I'll go then I'll go to, to grain after that. Um, so firstly, select feeds that have a high fiber content. Um, and a low grain content first and fiber does all sorts of um, amazing things but in winter it also helps to keep our horses warm as well so um, yeah fiber first fats and oils and then go to grain I'm trying to you're kind of add slowly if you're starting oils just just like anything just always introduce really slowly just so the particularly the gut microbes can cope Absolutely. So I usually start off with like a quarter of a cup a day, depending on the size of the horse. And then every few days can kind of increase that as a rule of thumb by about a quarter of a cup. And you can get up to, you know, with oils, you can get up to one to two cups a day. And that's really nice, um, dense calories without having to increase the amount that your horse needs to eat. Um, so really avoid though unprocessed grains and what I mean by that is you know if you were feeding like whole maize or just even if grains are just cracked they're not um, digested that well by the horse and the um, the the one that is is oats and I, there was a question on oats earlier so what do we think of oats oats are actually well digested by the horse so um the old days where they used to feed just loose and chaff and oats um it's probably the safest grain for a horse from a hind gut perspective because they're very well digested in the full gut uh, but they will they're still you know got a decent starch content so don't feed it to a horse that um, you don't want weight gain on or um, that might be sensitive to sugar and starch. Um, and then we've got um, digestive enzymes, um, for example, and hindgut support, which, which are both in EQ and RP, which will help with both the foregut. So digestive enzymes would help digest our grains and our hard feeds. And then the the supportive ingredients um, for the hindgut are going to help the, the bacteria there thrive and going to help keep a really nice stable um, pH and, and good environment for the bugs that we want to be there. Because if we actually feed badly, the hindgut will, will adapt. Um, but I, I gave a talk, I think it was to the Fiber Fresh crew a while ago, and I used this really bizarre analogy, but it kind of stuck with me, where I said, you know, they don't all exist together, all the bugs in the gut. So, for example, I think of like the, the grain-based bugs now as kind of like a gang coming in and kind of attacking the mean gang. Bugs. <laughs> Yeah, and they don't they don't all get along and they they kick out the fiber-based bugs, which yeah. are like the good guys, right? So um we had this funny little yeah graphics going on in all of our head thinking about like these gang bugs coming in. <laughs> but um yeah, basically they're they're the bad guys. So we actually want to keep them out and they operate in a much more acidic environment than our fiber bugs do. So that's another reason why, for example, I, I test um, fecal pH in the field because I know that um, the the pH of the dung has a direct correlation with the the pH in the hindgut and the cecum specifically. So yeah, make sure that you've got some support in there, especially for horses where they might have a compromised um, gut or if you know they've been traveling or performing or but we we see more and more that all of our horses need some help. Right, so we've um, hay is obviously um, a big part of our horse's diet in, in winter, 
um, but not every hay is, is suitable for every horse. So our typical kind of meadow hays are usually rye clover based, and these will typically be fine for, you know, thoroughbreds, performance horses, poor doers, um, horses that are okay on a higher sugar starch diet. But there are a lot of horses that can't tolerate these types of hays. Um, and if you suspect that your hay may have a high sugar content, I can't advocate enough to get it tested just to check. I had a client um, that uh, purchased 300 bales of hay a few seasons ago without testing and then her horse absolutely lost it on the hay. We got it tested and the, the sugar content in it was so high we couldn't believe it because even from looking at it you couldn't tell. Um, wow. So, and, and just keep in mind that we can do things like soak hay to um, reduce our sugar content. But if we've got a really high sugar hay to begin with, often we can't get uh, the sugar level down low enough for a horse that needs, you know, for, for a laminitic or something like that that needs. And it just, um, when you talk about fire protectively, I guess one of the, the benefits of having something like that is you've got consistency, you've got the analysis already done. So there's none of this guesswork or, because there is the whole, you get the hay, you send it away to get tested. There's a time lag sometimes we're just so grateful to get hay we kind of don't really worry about testing oh. but for me it's, having that consistent result and analysis should be a you know really a, a great benefit yeah absolutely and and it's they're probably the the safest forages in New Zealand for our horses in actual fact because they're they're batch tested we know the sugar levels of them are really low um, we know that inherently sugar is really hot, low and loose in anyway so it is actually a, a safe forage for those needing low sugar but we don't want to feed it to our kind of fatties or ones that we want to lose weight or, or maintain weight because it is high in calories. Um, but for example, the Fiber Fresh range within there, you've got a meadow product that's got no leucine in it. It's just high fiber grasses. Um, but we know that the sugar level in, in that product is very low, as well as like Fiber Easy, for example, you've got Timothy and leucine. So you've always got options. But yeah, amazing forages to use for horses where you need to make sure that we're keeping that sugar level low. Thank you. No worries. So then we've got like our lucerne haze again. Um, great, great source of um, protein for those that need um, weight gain, for young horses, for lactating mares, for those that need um, additional calories and protein. Uh, and then we've got, I guess, our kind of, I've just collected all of these together, our, our kind of non-ryegrass, um, high fibre, um, horse-friendly horse haze, if you like. So um, we see some Timothy, um, things like brown top, um, Coxfoot. We're seeing some of these other kind of types coming out. But just keep in mind that a lot of the meadow haze that we stay, see are still tend to be rye um, clover based. So just make sure that you're getting the right hay for your situation. Nick, can the LinkedIn mycotoxins in rye, there's... Is it more prone to mycotoxins than other haze? Yep. So, so we see um, mycotoxins in our a lot of our rise, and and the reason for that is that the the endophyte in there is actually there for a reason, so that that um, grass persists and so that it stays um, stays around. Uh, but the problem with that is that we get these um, these responses from horses with regards to the toxins that the that are produced by the fungi. So um, so we see that in rise and we see it um, in some other grasses as well. Um, but just because it's in a hay doesn't necessarily mean that we don't lose that toxin. Um, and as well as that, especially this season um, where we've got kind of not great haymaking conditions, we've had a lot of um, moisture all over the country. Um, a lot of hay harvests were, um, you know, kind of, subpar and we, we we may have been storing wet hay as well and that's another way that we can get toxins in our hay too um cool so so what do we need to watch out for this season with hay these is kind of what i've touched on um it might be really hard to get good hay this season 
I have um, had quite a few reports and seen um, some quite heavy hay around um, and that may be that that hay wasn't properly dried um, when it was harvested. So, so do your best um, homework on your hay if you can, but I know it can be tough because sometimes we kind of take what we can get. So that's, that's where some of these alternative forages might be really useful this season especially. Um, if you can, please get your hay tested. And I can't stress that enough. You know, we spend quite a bit of money on hay. Um, we're feeding it, you know, as a reasonable part of our diet, especially in winter. So we want to make sure what's in there, make sure it's balanced um, and make sure that it's safe for our horse. Um, I think we've got a, we do, we've got a bit of a hay blog coming out um as well that touches on some of the issues around hay so I won't get into too much depth there but um yeah be careful how you store it and um for example make sure you've got good ventilation um where you're storing your hay try to leave some gaps and things and that will avoid our um our hay you know it will ensure that we preserve it um well and yeah, we must need toxin binders um, as well for our hay, probably this season more than most, um, because we might get all sorts of funny things jumping out because of these moisture levels that we've had. Yep, yep. Look, I'm just thinking what I might do, I might jump into the next section just um, as time is moving along. We might move through the sure. street. Do you want to jump in and maybe look at some of the questions that are coming through? There's some yep, tricky totally. ones that are coming in that might require, even if, if there's some, if you put a question through and it's quite long, could you maybe send through the email address or even copy and paste the question and email to us at Beside and we would hate to miss answering it. So just in case we don't, just make sure you copy your question. Okay. So let's talk about, and we'll move through this reasonably quickly, we can always do another webinar just on stress because the reality is, now we know how important the gut is, that as horse owners we need to really identify that the modern life of our horses is stressful and we need to start really understanding that the impact of the stress is not always seen but it's happening. And we will keep riding, transporting, competing our horses. We love them, we want to do that. But as horse owners, it's our responsibility, which is why you're here, to learn about the impact of stress and how we manage that. So some of the most common stresses in our horses are transport stress. We could talk about this for hours, but literally the nature of transport is that it's often uncontrollable and unpredictable for our horses. Periods of time without feed, it can be hot, it can be humid. It just creates stress at so many levels. What we'll do, we can actually send a copy of this um, webinar to everybody. So as I'm moving through these reasonably quickly, don't panic because we can send you copies. I think heat stress is a major one that we are, we've always known it can create problems, but we haven't understood the link to the gut. And what we now know is when a horse is hot and they want to then blood goes to the surface to release the heat, there's blood now being taken away from this huge immune organ. And we've spoken about how important it is to keep that fishnet and those shoelaces tight. So one thing we're really excited about in one of our products, Stress Paste, is having an ingredient called betaine. And betaine actually keeps the cells hydrated to avoid that chance of leaky gut. But travel in itself has so many stresses. So we need to make sure we're planning for it and we're allowing for it because we often travel our horses and then we do this big event and wonder why they're suddenly cranky, girthy, loose manure, not performing the best. Be really aware that travel is, is a massive stress that we put on our horses. I know in some of the racing industries overseas, they measure the gut microbiome and they actually can tell how long a horse takes to go back to pre-travel um, levels. So they can say if this horse takes three or four days to come back to the pre-travel levels, then they need to be aware where they travel them to and how they compete. So travelling will change the gut microbiome. Remember, they're the ones that are creating the magic. Performance stresses, you know, the first time we take a horse out, Starting them under saddle. I read a great paper the other day around thoroughbreds where they measured cortisol levels in saliva, saying that two really stressful times was the first time starting under saddle 
And then also the first time on the track, we underestimate again when these new experiences happen that are for the horse uncontrollable, unpredictable, where they're flight animals and we just ask so much of them. So if you go back to what Nikita's saying, feeding fibre, diversity of fibre, how do you feed all the different gut microbes so you create that mucosal lining, you have that gut intact, the gut can just do its magic and the horse can keep being the incredible being that we want it to be. So again, I know I am moving through this quickly, but it's about understanding that the stress we put on our horses, both physical and psychological, then create leaky gut. And what we do know is once that happens, the horse uses really precious resources to close the gut. And in production animals, we know it means a drop in milk production, for example. In horses, we don't know really what it means, but for me, it shows up as, you know, perhaps stride length shorter, or they don't recover as well, or, you know, all those things that happen when we put stress on our horses. So travel, there's some really obvious things. So just always make sure if you're way competing, if you can, take the same hay with you. Every time we change the hay, we stress the gut. And loose in particular is a great buffering hay. It's got great amino acid profile, long stem, chewing, creating salivation. We'll talk about stress paste in a moment. Stress paste is not a calming paste. It is designed for lots of reasons, but particularly for travel. The whole gut needs support from the stomach to the small intestine to the hind gut. The longer we keep our horses without feed, the greater the risk of gastric ulcers. The longer the gut microbes don't get fed, the longer food's not passing through. So they're not hydrated, all those things. So always prepare for travel in an ideal world, particularly at a high level, a performance level, and you're an inventor, for example, it's around safety. If you can travel, give yourself some time in between to let the horse re regroup, regather, settle, start to reestablish those good bacteria that, you know, the mean ones have been bullying and killed some of them off. Give them a chance. The gut bacteria determine everything. Keep them hydrated, they keep them fueled, they keep them eating, they keep them calm but, uh, but athletic. Nikita, I'm speaking very quickly. If you want to jump in at all. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just type, madly typing back to a lot of the questions Excellent. that we might not get time to cover. So, But Wonderful. I think everyone can see the responses, can they? So then, yeah. Fabulous. But yeah, I'll jump um, in where I need to. Fabulous. We talk about gut health and for me and for certain animal health, we know the gut does everything. How do we get great gut? We've talked about diet. We're talking about evidence-based supplements. We'll jump to in a moment, but management is so important. So you can see that's a, that's my horse having a nibble net, and I bought that nibble net I think twenty years ago. It's still in great condition. Just a little bit of fiber in the gut, and even though I will take her straight from the paddock, I just kind of go, why not tie her up, let her chew, salivate, cover the stomach before she's ridden, and it's a myth that horses will get a stitch if they've got a full stomach. So we want them chewing, salivating. Their stomach is never meant to be empty. They make stomach acid all the time. So, again, management for things like exercise is great. If you are changing a horse paddock or you're moving to a new area or you're trying a new feed, constantly think about how is this stress event impacting on my horse's gut and the gut bacteria. So. We've just touched on this. Letting your horses be as natural as possible. That's two of my horses, just mutual grooming, getting the rugs off, you know, having a scratch. And you can see that their eyes go a bit doughy and they chew and they salivate. And, you know, we know that every time we change horses around and we change the paddock hierarchy, that can create stress. So it's being aware of all the ways that we stress our horses. We can't always avoid it, but we can certainly manage it. So in terms of supplements, I think Nikita's covered this around what about supplements in New Zealand and particularly around vitamins and minerals. We've really made clear the point, and there are some really great complete feeds. Right? We are not anti-complete feeds, but it's about using them appropriately and using them for the energy requirements of your horse. I have lots of horses on fibre-based diet with digestive VM. I have others that run really great complete feeds. And again, I think we should have another session, Nikita, about how to read feed labels. And uh, to cut through the crap of marketing. 
It's Let's one of my that. favorite pastimes. Um, I'm just getting a lot of people asking similar questions about hay testing and where they can get their pasture tested. So okay. um, I'll, I guess we'll send out details, but everyone That'd can. Be great. Um, that would be great. Look, actually, just on that, Nikita is a valuable resource in New Zealand. So I'm not just saying this. I just use her. She, what I love about working with Nikita is that she just doesn't let any, you know, her knowledge is extensive, but she always makes you feel like you're not stupid. So she'll answer the questions and keep it sensible. She's an amazing resource and you're so fortunate to have her. So, which is why we love working with her. So okay. just quick. No, but it's true, though, and I mean, I get to work with lots of people and it's really, really nice to have someone with such knowledge and experience that is just so kind and generous in sharing your knowledge. So that, that I mean, I absolutely mean that. Um, okay, we just brought on seven. I'm just going to quickly finish by saying when I started Poseidon, I started it because of a horse that couldn't get the right candle lead. <laughs> and also I fed him some rye hay and he started um, head shaking and I had trouble getting weight on him. All gut things, he was an off the track. I have learned so much there. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine that down the track we would be leading the way in gut health. We are so proud of what we're creating. We don't want to be a company that has 25 million supplements. That is confusing. We truly believe that you support the gut and you do that well, then it reduces the needs to so many other supplements. So really quickly, and I'd love to hear, you know, in the, probably not the chat box, but the Q&A, you can even say whether you use our products. Digestive EQ for so everyday gut support. We've got the, and we've just improved the formulation. It was only five years old, but we went, science is changing. We can do it better, and we have. There are supplements that have been on the market for years that have never changed, but we keep moving. Science changes. We change with it. That is so important. There's lots of buffering in the stomach. We've got a good calcium, um, magnesium balance. We've got digestive enzymes, really high-level amino acids, and postbiotics. Just a quick shout out, we don't use probiotics because there's lots of question marks around them. Do they survive the stomach acid? Are they the right bacteria? Do they survive processing? Do they make it to the hindgut? But what we want is the benefits of probiotics, which is what a postbiotic is. So we've added postbiotics. That's EQ, everyday gut support. Digestive RP, Nikita nailed it, EQ on steroids. The higher the stress, the more support they need. Stress from grains, stress from exercise, stress from competing, stress from traveling. It only got released at the end of last year. And oh my goodness, we just love it. Equibine is the new product that's just been released. There are lots of questions coming through. It's taken us three years to get Equibine registered through the um through New Zealand. So we're we're being we're very um, proud of what we've created, but we're also making sure that we are very compliant at all times with Equibine. What makes it different, though, it's not just, hasn't just got the elotox, it's got other ingredients to kind of cope, I guess, with the impact of mycotoxins. So just at the end, we've spoken about an amazing palatable pellet that you can add to fibre to tick all the boxes and stress paste. And stress paste is really the one that is different. I'm just going to keep pushing through here. What's good about stress paste is not a calming paste. We don't want to sedate our horses when they're stressed because then they just can't tell us. We need to make sure we support the gut at all levels. So people are using it for travel, the buffering, the feed for the bacteria, for performance, post-recovery. Lots of people are using it when they're getting their horses scoped, you know, time off feed so they can make sure they're always protected. It is, you know, we, in terms of Australia, it's we just cannot keep up the supply because people are finally realizing we're not about sedating. Support the gut, take the inflammation away, take the pain away, let the gut do what it's got to do. They are naturally calm, but athletic and trainable and able to back up. So it really is a new product that is well, when I say new, we've just put it out in a pouch, but it's gaining momentum because we're now understanding the complexity of the gut. Spoken about EQ, the, the thing that we do differently is that we just don't put a little bit of sprinkle. We put the actives in at the level they need to be to be effective. And it's about, again, adding the amino acids, having the enzymes, having all that whole approach to support the gut. 
I think gut health is for every horse. I mean, if we're asking something of them, it's like humans, you know, the gut gets compromised. So really, if you are riding, competing, traveling, all those things, support it. But again, there are some obvious gut issues, then EQ is good for that. Which to choose? I think I've covered that. High the stress, then RP, everyday horses. Most horses, EQ will do really well. Um, do you want to say anything about equibine, Nikita, that you haven't already mentioned? Yeah, so um, Equibind is, is a new product that contains Allotox. And for those of you that haven't heard of Allotox, that is a um, what we call a next generation mycotoxin binder. So it works in a, in a variety of ways and it binds a lot of different toxins. So toxins are quite specific um, as to, you know, what, what binder will, will bind them or not. And unfortunately, we don't know a heck of a lot still about um, all of the different pasture-based toxins that we might encounter. We know quite a lot about grain-based toxins because of other species, um, specifically like poultry and things where they, they have a big effect and they're fed a lot of grain, but we don't know as much about pasture-based toxins. So the great thing about Allotox is we know that it works on a lot of the known pasture-based toxins. Um, so if you are worried that toxins um, may be an issue for, for your horse, and what I often see in the field is that um, we might be having some mycotoxin issues, but we might also be having some sugar issues and things like that. So often it's multifactorial, um, but definitely give, give Equibind a go if you think that your horse may have a mycotoxin issue because um, Allotox that's in there, um, we know that it works on pasture-based toxins, which, which is super exciting because um, it's not just the behavioural things we see. Um, I know I've got, um, I think Jenny, you're still there. Um, a client, she's been a client of mine for many years and um, she was having some issues with her horse on the binder that she was using. I'm, I'm sure you won't mind me saying this, Jenny. Um, and since switching to um, Equibind, she's found that those issues have gone. So, so really, yeah, give it a go. It's an exciting one. Exciting. It's been a long time to get here, but in Australia, we have the toxin binder included in EQ. The rules in New Zealand are different. So we are, it's been a lot of work, but in the short time it's been to market, we are getting so testimonials. So the combination of that with EQ or RP is pretty, pretty impressive. So if you are using it, we'd love to hear your results. If you're not and you choose to use it, please, as a company, we do what we do. We will make a difference and we love, love hearing how our products are going. Um, I think we've spoken about VM. So then, thank you. But look, we've covered so much and I'm just aware that it's now, so what is it now? Not 10 past nine for you guys. So everyone stayed on. Nikita, great job. You kept everybody interested and engaged. So thank you. And with the question, how are we, are we feeling like we're getting on top of those or? I just I've answered. I've answered a bunch in the chat, which I don't know if everyone can see the responses, but some of them, um, can someone tell me if you can? <laughs> um, can you see all the responses, Linda? Yes, I can. Um, yes. And yes. then there's a bunch that I'm still, like, they're popping up okay. all the time. Okay. Um, there was one, Linda, somebody has asked about um, how much Equibine to feed, and so I thought I would maybe leave that one to you because you probably know a bit closer to your heart about the rates and stuff yeah we um, can probably it, it's a tricky one because of the line. yeah we have to say according to the amount of feed you're feeding but what I might do whoever's asked that question if they could email us I can actually send the response and maybe we could send that out with the email as well so that everybody can see what the response is yeah. because and I just I'm want to make thinking, sure sorry yeah carry on now you go what we're going to say next um, I was just going to say there's probably about 10 people that I've just flicked my email out to as well. But if anyone does want to email, especially about testing or any questions around that, it's really easy to do. Um, and we basically will send you a pasture kit out that you can send back to us. And then we um, send, send that sample off. And we actually send it to um, the States and also but. Uh, New Zealand to get the selenium tested um, so so yeah just flick me an email nikita at varney.nz and I can come back to you about info or feed info or testing or anything 
fabulous. I'm just looking at some great comments here. Thank you, Sarah. She's saying she loves EQ and has all the show ponies on it. Um, look, I think RP again is the next level. The only thing I can say is give it a go and see whether you see an improvement. I have to admit, I'm now switching most of my show horses over to RP. I just feel like the gut needs as much support as it can. Um, Jenny's saying she loves the VM and Equivine. So, oh, Sarah loves digestive EQ. Um, Deanne wants to know, is the EQ in a powder form? Yes, it is actually in a powder form. The VM is a pellet, but the EQ and the RP are both a powder form. And it does stick really nicely to the fermented haylage, also beet fibres, or if you're using oils. So it's, um, and it's not a huge amount, but the, the levels are because you want to have the actives so they actually work. Um, so I think that's, Oh, lots of lots of comments here. Oh, look, thank you so much. I'm so impressed at the turn up tonight. We've got, I think, more than 50% who enrolled attend. That's that is awesome. Good job, New Zealanders, because often in Australia we'll have a big sign up and we might get 20% of people. This is fabulous. So I am so grateful for you joining us. Nikita, thank you for sharing all your information and we can no talk worries. A we lot. just need more time, eh? More time. <laughs> so, look, if you're finding that you love this and you've got some ideas from other webinars, please let us know. Nikita and I just, we have great banter. There are some things that we get really passionate about, such as reading seed labels. And, you know, I'd love to touch, go more into looking at stress. But if you've got questions or topics or webinars you want us to cover, and Nikita's got an amazing business partner who's a vet. She joined us on the Gastric Ulcer webinar last year. We can bring that as well because I think as horse owners, we deserve and our horses deserve to get information that's actually accurate because between social media and Facebook and so many products coming to market, unfortunately, we don't always get accurate information so you know that when you come to us we will deliver factual evidence-based information and you know it's such a joy to work with you all so oh, someone's commenting tony yeah look we love having that is so great i wish tony was here i'll pass that on brianna that you you're commenting tony because tony has been with us since january and he's he's loving clients that are contacting him and saying oh my goodness this product has changed my horse that's what we do it for, don't we, Nikita? It's for, all for the horse. And as horse owners ourselves, we get, we get the frustrations and the challenges. So we will, we're, it's going to make it hard to pick the um, pick a random person to win the prize, but so good everyone stayed to the end. And, yeah, thank you. A shout-out to um, Fire Protect 2 for their Fibre Fresh for offering a prize for tonight. And, Nikita, is there anything else you want to say before I say goodnight to everybody? Gosh, we've gone so far over. But if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to flick me, myself, or Linda an email, and I'm sure we can help you out more, especially with some of the specifics around diet. Happy to help out there. Maybe we can Fabulous. Do. All right. Thank you, you so much. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Thanks, everyone. Bye.